Smarty Pants proudly presents A Moment in Time with Dr. Keith Black, world-renowned leading heart and brain specialist. What prompted the leap from heart medicine to brain surgery? You know, I uh, was fortunate enough to, to work when I was in high school uh, with a heart surgeon and researcher that had developed an artificial heart valve. Mm -hmm. uh, but when I got to medical school, I uh, uh, started uh, learning about the brain. In my first course in neuroanatomy, I, I began to see the structure and the anatomy of the human brain. Mm -hmm. And for me, that was nothing more wonderful nothing more beautiful that I could imagine in the known universe. Uh, and I fell in love with the brain. I started studying everything I could about the brain. Uh, neurochemistry, how the chemistry of the brain uh, worked to allow us to remember, to allow us to have thoughts, uh, the anatomy, the physiology. Um, and, you know, I, I wanted to know everything there was to know about the human brain, you know, even, you know, to the point for what in the brain allowed us to actually have conscious thoughts. Um, what takes place in your brain when you actually are looking at this video mm -hmm. and you see this image of me talking and you have an emotional reaction to it. What is that process? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that is, is the ultimate scientific frontier. There's nothing um, probably more important for us to know than who we are, how we are, what we are what allows us to see, what allows us to think, to speak, to have emotions, to feel, to create, uh, to make new medicines, to treat diseases, to land a man on the moon. Uh, it's the ultimate sort of question I, I feel in nature. And, and Where did cancer come from? I mean, like, was it around 200 years ago? or? So cancer has probably been present for as long as life has been present. Uh, and cancer is really just sort of a rogue colony of cells that decide not to behave like good citizens anymore. Oh, so normally your cells, when they grow and they, they, begin, they make contact with other cells, they say, okay, now I'm going to stop growing. What a cancer does is that it loses that sort of internal inhibition or internal control. So they act wild, rogue, out of control. So when they come into contact with other cells, instead of stopping their growth, they continue to grow and overgrow the neighbors, destroying their neighbors, and basically setting up um, a, a large mass of tumor that ultimately can kill the host. Do you see more treatment involving non-invasive methods? Invasive. Absolutely. I think one of the things that I would love to do is to eliminate the need to do brain surgery itself. Mm -hmm. And a lot of our research exploiting how to use the immune system with therapeutic vaccines to activate the immune system to fight the cancer. I mean that we're now beginning to move away from surgery, radiation, and chemotherapy to much more intelligent strategies uh, in harnessing the power of the body's own immune system to begin to fight and eradicate uh, cancer in the brain as well as other parts of the body itself. We're also looking at other technologies, you know, using focused microwave energy. Uh, to vibrate the water molecules in the cancer cells and heat them up to 200 degrees Fahrenheit, wow. which denatures all the protein and kills the cancer, leaves the normal cell intact without the need to do invasive surgery. And a lot of those strategies uh, hold tremendous promise. We're using nanotechnology to uh, load chemotherapy onto a nanodrug that can target the chemotherapy exactly to the tumor mm -hmm. so it doesn't get to the rest of the body which can cause a lot of side effects and make it much more effective in eradicating and controlling tumor growth. What is the next leap in treatment for both cancer and particularly for brain surgery? Well I think there is an incredible opportunity for us now mm -hmm. um, to make some significant headway in treating brain cancer uh, and two things are emerging uh, to make that possible. One is that we have a fundamental revelation now 
in how cancer works. We know that there are only about three to four percent of the cells within any cancer, within any tumor, that actually continue to divide and grow and repopulate that tumor, which means that 95 to 96 percent of the cells within a tumor can only divide once or twice and then they will go ahead and die. So the focus is on what we call these cancer stem cells. These cells, two or three percent of the cancer that continue to repopulate the tumor and to grow. We know that these cancer stem cells, which I call sort of the, the queen cancer cells because the analogy is like a queen termite. You can kill all the daughter termites in your house, mm -hmm. but you won't get rid of the termites in your house until you kill the queen termite. So these two or three percent of the cells think of as sort of the cancer queen cells. Mm -hmm. We actually call them the cancer stem cells. They're more resistant to, to chemotherapy. They're more resistant to radiation therapy. So you can give radiation therapy to a patient with chemotherapy and it will kill all the daughter cells. But these cancer stem cells remain. We know that these cancer stem cells have a different chemistry, a different molecular structure than the daughter cells. And we can exploit those differences to begin to attack them. We know that they're actually more sensitive to immune attack. Mm -hmm. The second fundamental change is that we know the immune system is critical to attack cancer. So one of the things that we've done over the last 10 years is actually develop what we call a therapeutic cancer vaccine. We take the tumor and use it to make a, a vaccine for patients that already have cancer to activate their immune system to fight the cancer. And we can do this in about 60% of the patients that get the vaccine, their immune system becomes stimulated to fight the cancer. And in those patients, their survival is more than double the survival of the patients that don't get an immune response. And we've been able to convert the survival at two years of the most aggressive form of brain cancer from 8% to over 50%. Mm -hmm. Our new focus is to develop a vaccine against these cancer stem cells that we think would be even more effective and more potent in trying to eradicate and ultimately cure brain cancer.